Hey, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well today. So now we're ready to start some applications that involve adding and subtracting fractions, otherwise known as the word problems. And you are not going to cringe when we hear the say word problems, because these are the applications, the places where you're actually going to use the adding and subtracting of fractions, and we need to know how to do these. These help us to do our work better. We did some things like this before. We talked about algebra and writing word equations so that we truly understood what was happening with the problem. Because of course it's not enough to just see it in your head. If all you do is see it in your head, then when the situation gets too large to hold in your head, we don't have any process to fall back on. So even if it's really obvious to you what we should do, practice writing down the word equations and giving yourself some process so that when the situation gets a little bit more involved, we have the tools to deal with it. Okay, so we've done this part before. Word equations are the key to working with word problems. No big surprise there. If you can write a word equation, then you really know what's happening and you understand the situation. So it's the word equations and the diagrams that we create that are really going to help us figure out what's going on. All right, so you have your guided notes. I have mine. I'm going to scroll up and see if I can fit this whole page on here, but uh, probably not. So you may have to follow along a little bit with me because I don't want this to become too tiny for you to see. Okay, here we go. In a hot water heating system, a certain section of copper tubing weighs nine and three tenths pounds. The water inside the tubing weighs four and a quarter pounds. We would like to know the total weight of this section. This may sound familiar to you. We had something very similar to this several lessons ago. So let's start with the word equation and see if we can figure out what's happening here. We have some copper tubing and it has a weight all by itself. So we have the tubing weight As we read, we see it's asking us for a total, which is our key that addition is involved here. And of course, we're gonna add the weight of the tubing to the weight of the water. And that will give us the total weight. make sense of our situation. Okay, from here we want to fill in the things that we know. So let's see what we have. Um, the copper tubing weighs nine and three tenths pounds, so let's th fill that in right underneath the words, nine and three tenths. The water is four and a quarter pounds, and the total weight we don't know. And we choose a variable for that. If you're going to use T, make it a capital T because lowercase t's tend to look like plus signs. Um, otherwise, maybe X is a good idea. But I'm going to use capital T for the total weight. And we'll just keep track of that over here. So the total weight is equal to capital T. Okay, let me clean that up a second. Hang on. Okay, that looks better. Not fabulous, but better. Okay, well at any rate, here we are. Nine and three tenths plus four and one fourth is equal to t. And we know how to do this addition. We've already worked on finding common denominators and adding mixed numbers. So from here, this is just a bit of mechanics. Let's find the common denominator. And we'll do this by looking at multiples of the largest dynamiter, I'm sorry, denominator. So does 4 go into 10? No, it does not. Let's try 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. Does 4 go into 20? Yes, it does. So we're going to use 20 as the common denominator. So we have 9 and 3 tenths. 3 tenths. If I multiplied numerator and denominator both by 2, we would end up with 6 twentieths. 
and 1 fourth. If we multiplied numerator and denominator both by 5, we would end up with 5 twentieths. So really what we have up here is 9 and 6 twentieths plus 4 and 5 twentieths. And that is now equal to the total weight. Normally I would write this vertically, but this one's not so bad. We have 6 twentieths plus 5 twentieths. Remember that we're always going to start with the smallest part, the right hand side. 6 twentieths plus 5 twentieths is 11 twentieths. And then we move on to the whole numbers. 9 plus 4 is 13. And that is equal to our t, the total weight. So let's slide down and see what else we have here on this page. The first thing is to determine whether or not the answer makes sense. So we started off with 9 pounds and a little bit, and then 4 more pounds and a little bit, and we ended up with 13 pounds plus some stuff. That's reasonable. So our answer at least is in the right ballpark. So if you can give your answer a gut check and then express your answer as a sentence, because sentences help you to remember the units. We are not done by saying 3 and 11 twentieths. When we get all the way done, we know that the total weight of this section is 13 and 11 twentieths, and those are pounds. We started off with pounds of tubing, we added pounds of water, and we end up with a total number of pounds. Okay, let's slide on to the next one and see what we can do here. All right, we have a freezer. The distance from the front of a standalone freezer to the wall is 28 and 1 8 inches. The freezer itself has a depth from front to back of 23 and 5 16 inches, and we would like to know how much clearance is between the freezer and the wall. Um, I'm assuming these types of things are presented to us perhaps in some specifications, because otherwise we would just go and measure it, but perhaps we can't, so let's just check this out. The first thing we'd like to do, of course, is to make a little bit of a diagram. Nothing fancy here, but we need a distance here for the freezer. We need a little bit of space here for the clearance. And if we put these two together, we end up with a total. So that should help us get a grasp of the situation. So really what's happening is we're starting off with the freezer depth. Plus the clearance. And that will give us the total distance. There's our word equation. What do we know? Let's see. The distance from the front of the freezer to the wall is 28 and 1 8th of an inch. That's, oh, that's here, over here where the total is, 28 and 1 8th. So the other thing that the word equation does for us is make sure we put the values in the right spots. Uh, the freezer has a depth of 23 and 5 16 inches. And we would like to know the clearance. So maybe we'll just call that C. C is the clearance. There we go. This is just like a little algebra equation, just like we had before. If we want to get the variable C all by itself, we have to isolate it and undo this addition over here. So we would subtract 23 and 5 16 from both sides of the equation. Yeah, we did this a long time ago, didn't we? We see the opposite terms here, make this great big giant zero, and C is now all by itself. And on the right hand side, well I don't know what this is, I'm just going to write it down. We have 28 and 1 8th minus 23 and 5 16 but we can calculate that. All right, I need a little more space, 
So let's scroll up here. All right. Um, we're going to need a common denominator. This one's nice and easy because we're working with those common workplace fractions. The common denominator should be 16. And that happens a lot with workplace fractions, that one denominator is a multiple of the other. So really, all we have to do is convert 1 eighth into 16 So just for fun, let's do this the official way. We have 28 and 1 eighth. And we are subtracting 23 and 5 16 We want that common denominator of 16, so we have to convert the top fraction. And of course, what this gives us is 28 and 2 16 And over here, this second fraction stays the same, subtracting 23 and 5 16 All right, so we get ready to subtract, but we have to start on the right-hand side, just like before. And I can't take 5 16 away from 2 16 I'm going to have to borrow. And you remember how to do that, right? We're going to take 1 away from 28, and it becomes 27. And the 1 is going to push over and join the fraction. So we have 1 and 2 16 And so what that really means is that we have 27. And then we're going to take this 1 and 2 16 right here and write that as an improper fraction. So 16 times 1 is 16, plus 2 more is 18 16 And now we can drag this bottom one all the way over here and subtract the 23 and 5 16 There, that's better. 18 minus 5 is 13. And 27 minus 23 is 4. After doing all that work, it's not a bad idea to check these things on the calculator. You remember how to do this, right? We'll use the second key so that we're talking about these mixed numbers. We have 28. Use those arrow keys to navigate the template. 28 and 1 eighth. And then we will subtract 23. Oops, that's a mixed number again. 23 and whoops that's too high yeah the up arrow doesn't go anywhere it goes to the previous line we don't need that so let's get back to where we belong there we go 23 and 5 sixteenths come out of there and see what we get that's not going to bother us that we ended up with this improper fraction. We will just use that fraction converter from proper to mixed number and find the 4 and 13 sixteenths that we wanted. Now we want to go back and check and see whether or not that answer makes sense. So let's find our picture again. Whoops, that's a little too far. There we go. So we have 23 and 5 sixteenths here. So a little less than 23 and a half, plus a little bit more than 4 and a half. So 23 and 4 is 27. And then if I add the parts together, I can probably get 28 and a little bit. So the answer is sensible. It's in the right ballpark. So now we just won't forget the sentence. There are, or there is, 4 and 13 sixteenths, and these are inches. H-E-S, I could have used a little more space there. All right, let's try the next one here. We have a piece of wire with a length of 20 and 7 twelfths feet, and this chunk has been cut from a 100 foot long coil of wire. And we'd like to know how much wire is left after the piece is removed. Good place for a picture.
this picture is probably better off if we label it with some values. Right? The piece that we cut off is 20 and 7 twelfths feet long. What's left over, we don't know. But we do know that the total length was 100 feet. You know when we finish this problem, we're going to be checking to see if our answer makes sense. Let's try to, try to estimate this a little bit on our own before we even get started. We have 100 minus 20, that would give us 80. But this is 100 minus 20 plus a little bit. So our answer should be close to 80, but a little bit less. All right, so the word equation. What do we know? We started off with an amount, an original amount, of wire. And we removed some. So really, we're just following this process through time. After we removed some, we have stuff that's left over, this remaining amount. There we go, one lovely word equation. We already chose x in our picture to represent the unknown, and we said that this was going to be the remaining amount. Now, if you looked up at this picture and said to yourself, the remaining amount plus what was cut off gives me 100 feet, that's perfectly fine. It's a different way to express exactly the same situation. So there's more than one way to think of a word equation. More than one word equation will work. We just have to understand what's happening. All right, let's get back to work here. We need to fill in what we know. So let's see, the original length, that would be 100, minus the stuff we cut off, 20 and 7 twelfths. And that will give us what's left over, the x. All right, let's come down here and do some calculating. Pretty soon I'm going to turn you loose to calculate on your own, but let's do this one together. We have 100 minus 20. Right, try to line everything up like we normally would, all of those place values. So the 7 twelfths is over here. You can't take 7 twelfths away from nothing, so we're going to have to do a little borrowing. If I take 1 away from 100, that becomes 99, and the 1 that we borrowed needs to be written as twelfths. So 99 and 12 twelfths. And hopefully it's really easy to see that that's exactly the same as 100 minus 20 and 7 twelfths. There. Now the subtraction isn't bad at all. 12 minus 7 is 5 and 99 minus 20 is 79. 79 and 5 twelfths, just like we thought, a little bit less than 80. So our answer is entirely sensible and now we put our answer as a sentence. We have 79 and 5 twelfths what? Look back at the original problem and we see that everything started off talking about feet. Okay, next problem. The inner diameter of a washer is 1 and 3 sixteenths and this of course means inches. And the wall thickness is 17 30 seconds of an inch. What is the outer diameter? It's probably not a bad idea to draw a picture here, even if your drawing isn't fabulous. There, there's my washer. But the inner diameter is this distance right there. So this is 1 and 3 sixteenths. And the wall thickness, we have one on this side, we have one on this side. So there's 17, 30 seconds. Let me change my color here. Over this side and 17, 30 seconds on the left side as well. So from the far left edge to the far right edge, that will be the outer diameter, worthy of a word equation. So what do we know? 
we start off with the inner diameter. plus the thickness on the left. plus the wall thickness on the right. And that will give us the outer diameter. Okay, so you know what? Take this one from here. Pause the recording after and fill in everything that you know and see what you can do to calculate this on your own. And then come back. All right, let's see what you did. So the inner diameter we know is 1 and 3 16 inches. The wall thickness we know is 17 30 seconds of an inch. And we have two of those and we want to find the outer diameter. If you're going to call something a variable, don't use O. It starts to look like zero, so X is pretty good as the outer diameter. We have fractions that are not like fractions. We're going to need a common denominator, but again, we're working with workplace fractions. And we already know that 16 goes into 32, so we'll just use 32 as that common denominator. Converting these should be pretty easy for you. 3 times 2 is 6, 16 times 2 is 32. So 1 and 3 16 becomes 1 and 6 30 seconds. The other two are just fine the way they were. And we know how to add these. I need some space though. Starting with the fractions first, 17 plus 17 is 34, plus 6 more gives me 40. So the fractional part is 40 30 seconds, and the whole number is just 1. And of course, we can't leave it like this because this is improper. So 32 goes into 40 one time with 8 left over. We'll combine these whole numbers. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then look at the fraction. 8 30 seconds is not in lowest terms. 8 is equal to 8 times 1. 32 is equal to 8 times 4. So those 8's, right, 8 over 8 is 1. And 8 30 seconds is really one fourth. So rather than leave this as two and eight thirty seconds, we will call it two and one fourth. How did you do? I bet you did really well. Does our answer make sense? Well, let's see. If we come up just a little bit, whoops, too far again, and think about it, what do we have? 17 30 seconds, that's a little bit more than half. So a little bit more than half plus a little bit more than half, that gives us a little more than one. One and one is two plus some extra. So this is a very sensible answer. Okay, the last thing of course is to put this inside of a sentence so that we don't forget the units. The outer diameter of the washer is two and one fourth and those things like that of course meant inches. So if you want to leave it like that, go ahead, or if you'd like to write it out, that's fine too. All right, one more and then we'll call it good for today and you can start your homework. So now we have an ice machine making ice, All right? Sucks in some water, freezes it, spits out some ice. Every time it spits out some ice, we have a batch of ice. The batch of ice from the new ice machine weighs two ninths of a pound, not total, but two ninths of a pound less than the ice from the old machine. 
So apparently we got a better machine, but it doesn't make as much ice at a time as we used to get. Every batch from the new machine weighs three-fifths of a pound. We'd like to know what was the weight of a batch from the old machine. I think the manager is complaining. All right. This one really could probably use a word equation just to help us keep things straight. And it's going to come from right here. The new ice, sorry, a batch of the new ice weighs this much less than a batch of the old ice. So we're going to take this really descriptive sentence and use it to create our word equation. So the batch of ice from the new ice machine, the new batch. weighs, that's right here, is equal to, or the weight of the new batch is equal to, two-ninths of a pound less than. That tells us that we are going to subtract two-ninths from something. And we're going to subtract it from what happened with the old machine. So the old batch, and then we subtract some stuff, and the new batch is less. OK, let's fill in what we know. The batch from the new machine weighs 3 fifths of a pound. So that goes right here. Is equal to the old batch. Well, I don't know what that is. Right? That was the question. What is the weight of the ice from the old machine? So we should probably give that a variable. X is the weight of the old batch. There we go, X. And then, of course, minus 2 ninths can just drop straight down. All right, now it looks like some algebra. What would we do? How do we isolate this variable? Undoing the subtraction, we would add two ninths to both sides. So let's do that. Add two ninths here, add two ninths here, because of course we add it to both sides of the equation. Here we have those opposite terms, so they make a big fat zero, and x is now all by itself. x is equal to three fifths. Oh my, what was this? What was happening over here? I forgot what I did because I didn't write well. Here I am on the right-hand side, I added two ninths. So let's make sure we keep that plus sign. So I need 3 fifths plus 2 ninths. All right, we're in that situation. We need to find a common denominator and then add things together. Pause the recording, give it a shot, and then come back. Okay, let's see how you did. 3 fifths, we're going to need a common denominator. What should we use? The common denominator. Well, 5 is prime already. 5 times 9 is 45. Seems like a pretty good place to start. So we'll multiply 3 fifths by 9 over 9 and come up with 27 40 fifths. And of course, we'll multiply 2 ninths by 5 over 5. Hang on a second, let me clear that up. I'm not entirely sure what's happening there. It appears my pen and I are fighting again today. At any rate, two nights multiplied by five over five, we end up with 10 47ths. So, there we go. Three fifths is really 27 45ths. What am I saying? Not 47ths, 40 fifths. There, we'll fix that in blue so you can see it. 2 ninths is really 10 40 fifths. And when we add them together, of course, we get 37 40 fifths. Lucky for us, 37 is prime, so this is already in lowest terms. And now I've completely forgotten what we were doing in the first place. So let's go back up here just a little bit and see what we were talking about. Oh yes, the batch of ice. So the new batch, that would be 3 fifths 
otherwise known as 27 45ths, is equal to the old batch, which is here, minus the 2 ninths, minus this much. And that works. All right, so what's our real answer here? Hmm. That was, oh yes, that was our x right here. This is it. What is that? Go back and look. See what you defined x to be. And we said x is equal to 37 45ths, and that was the weight of the ice when the old machine was making the batches. So the old machine made a batch that weighed 37 45ths of a pound. All right. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.